Have you ever wondered how to fish or which fish are swimming in Cass Lake? Fishing is a hobby that many people enjoy. It is very calming and relaxing and it passes the time. Today I'll be talking about the fundamentals of fishing, common and non common fish here in Cass Lake, and different ways you can fish. The first is the fundamentals. So here you have your basic fishing rod, which I'm holding right here. And then here is a travel fishing rod. So it like breaks down, like this one just kind of. It, it breaks down so it's easier to travel with and it's not as large to carry around. So when you want to fish, you want to make sure your rod is put together nice and sturdy. And it's off the hook. So many people use either fake bait or real bait, which are worms. Most people rather prefer real because the fish like to catch onto them quicker. So when you fish, you want to take your line and kind of bring it towards you and take the safety like off the rod. And in Fishing 101, written by Monte, she suggests that you have a nice spinning reel and a sturdy, sturdy uh, rod. So when you do it, you want to, I'm not going to do it, but you cast back, and as you grow, you want to let go of your rod and put it back onto safety, so that way it's nice and sturdy and not wobbly, so when it's not on safety, it kind of just falls, and you don't want that because then the fish is going to take you along with it. <laughs> so then once you throw it in the water, you want to reel it in a little, so your line is nice and straight. And then as you wait and you feel a tug by the fish, you want to kind of yank your hole so that the hook grabs onto the fish's mouth and it's like a little sturdier in the mouth. So then when you start reeling it in, you want to kind of tug on it at the same time. And then you reel it in and just tug, tug, tug until you get your fish off the water and onto the surface. So then once you have the fish on the hook, there's two different ways you can take them off. You could either take them from the mouth, like stick your thumb in and pull them like that, and then unhook it. Or some fish have very sharp teeth, so you can't do that. So you want to grab them either from the top of like their body or the bottom and hold them like that and then take it out. But you have to be careful because many fish have spikes. So if you don't hold them properly, you can't get picked. So the next thing I'd be talking about are the common fish that you can catch. So here are like the fish that most people catch using a regular fishing rod. So in this corner, you have a large mouth bass, and you can tell by the dark horizontal line going down to his body. Here's a small mouth bass. It's lighter in color and has a red eye. This is called the black crappy, and you can tell because it has like salt and pepper, like the blood on its body. And here are they're called sunfish, but each one has a specific name. So the top one's a bluegill, and the bottom's a pumpkin seed. Mm -hmm. So the bluegill is a little darker, and you can determine it's a bluegill because right there it has like, the little blue thing, and then. The pumpkin seed is lighter in color and it has a little orange tap right there. So those are the two ways. So for the bass and the black crappy, you could take it off the hook using their mouth because their teeth aren't sharp, so it's not going to hurt. But with the with the sunfish, you have to grab them by like their body up here. So you want to like make sure their spikes are down and then you could just grab them like that because they're too small to grab with their by their mouth. So the best way to grab them is right like there. The next fish are fish that are not so common catching with a fishing rod, but are more common catching with like nets, with like trap nets, or just like using like a regular net by like the edge of the water. So here you have a yellow perch, and you can tell by the vertical lines going down his back. 
here's a walleye. Usually their eyes are like very like glossy and they look like really creepy. <laughs> here's a brown bullhead. And you can tell because it's darker colored. And they're like whiskers over here are brown. And then the other like other catfish have different colored whiskers. So that's how you can determine. And then here is a chain figural. And on its back, it has like chain links, so you can tell. And it's also smaller. This fish, you could grab like you would grab a sunfish right from its back. And then the brown bullhead, you would want to grab underneath the spine when taking it off instead of on top because it's just easier to maintain. The walleye has very sharp teeth, so I do not recommend putting your hand in where it's now because it will bite you and hurt. So your best bet is putting your hand behind like its neck and want by their tail so that way they don't like slap you. And then the chain figure, you can just grab like that. But I recommend using two hands because if you use just one, you're stressing the fish out. And then it's just going to cause them to become dead. And we don't want them in the water. So the next thing I will explain are the two other ways people fish. So another way people fish in winter, they go ice fishing. And... So in the article, fishing, ice fishing 101, um, they talk about how the two main important things is checking the width of the ice and making sure that you have the right um, gear because if the ice is too, it's not thick enough for you across, you will fall or you will disturb it when you're drilling a hole in it to create the ice. And they also recommend marking where you stay because, God forbid, you fall in and nobody knows, you already marked your spot. So they can find you very easily. You can also set up tents if you want to do it like spend the night, but you don't have to. Many people do because sometimes they catch fish better at nighttime than they do during the day. And then a lot of people go fishing on a boat. But it's like more motion sickness, so if you have motion sickness, I don't recommend the boat. I recommend just fishing off like a dock or something. What people do is either standing or sitting. But they recommend in an article of boat fishing, they recommend using um checking the weather. Checking the weather and um Wearing proper clothing because God forbid you don't check the weather before you go out. You run into a storm or it could be lightning. And if you're out there on a metal boat, that's not going to be good because I know that you will struck. And proper clothing because if you fall off, you will catch hypothermia and you should always wear a life vest. So that way, if you do fall off, you're not in shock and the life vest will keep you in the boat. Also, if you don't know how to swim, but keep you safe. So, if you go to the New York State Environmental Conservatory and Conservation, you can find all these fish and more about Cas Lake. They tell you the depth of the lake, the width, and all these different information. And also, if you want to learn more on how to fish, I recommend going to the New York right there and join the fishing club. I just explained how to fish. Different types of fish you can catch at Cass Lake and other ways you can try fishing. Fishing can be very relaxing and I recommend trying giving it a try to get your mind off things. I hope after this you would want to try fishing. Thank you.